we going, guys? Up next, we've got Lee Chantel, who's talking about ethics beyond the plague. So this goes a little bit further than just veganism and how we can actually demonstrate compassion within the rest of our lives as well. So settle in. She's got a workshop running here for the next hour. And after that, we'll have a Q&A with some of the Sea Shepherd crew who've actually been out on the ships. So stick around for that as well. Enjoy. Thank you, Charlotte. Okay. I'm going to stand up here a bit, so I'd love it if other people could come a bit closer. Um, I'm going to give a presentation called Ethics Beyond the Plate today, and um, I just thought I'd go through my background first. And I went vegetarian in 1994 when I was in year 10 at school, and I went vegetarian um, because every Saturday night my family used to have leg of lamb, roast leg of lamb. And um, I knew it was a lamb's leg because that was literally what it was called. And one day I asked my mum, what's that particular part of the leg of lamb that my sister and I used to like? And she said, it's the Achilles tendon. And I looked down at my foot and I've got one of those. And I looked over at the lamb's leg I was about to eat. And that was the first time I made that connection between the life that once was and the death I was about to consume. So then I stopped consuming red meat and um, I found out a couple of years later after I finished school about the egg and the dairy industries. And I became vegetarian originally because I didn't want to harm any animals whatsoever. I didn't want them to die for me. And then I found out um, about the dairy and egg industries that animals were dying. So animals still were dying even though they weren't, I wasn't actually consuming their flesh. So that's when I went vegan. And in January, that will be 20 years. Don't have a little clicker today, so bear with me. And um, I've been running a website called vivalavegan.net, and that's been for over 10 years. And it started in 2005, um, after I finished studying naturopathy, nutrition, and Western herbal medicine. And um, I just decided I'd um, release a recipe calendar. Because I thought, oh, 12 recipes, that's easy, I can do that. So I released that at the end of 2005, 2006, and that's how my website started. It was mostly to promote that calendar. And um, it's grown over the past 10 years. There's lots of different things on there. Blogs, articles, interviews, how-to videos, lots of different things. So there's 10 years worth of content on there, so check it out. And I've been giving talks to people about the vegan lifestyle over 10 years. So that's what I'm talking about today. I've um, released a few books and ebooks as well. My latest one is on vegan athletes. And um, Chrissy Cavallo, who's speaking here at 2.30, she's um, a vegan athlete from the Gold Coast. So she's a great person to learn some things from. And James Aspie's actually in my book too, because he used to be a personal trainer. talk about um, different types of vegans and how the word has changed over the past 20 years. So if someone told me 20 years ago that they were vegan, I knew what that meant. You know, wherever the world you, wherever in the world you were, you could say, I'm vegan. And that meant that people cared about animals, they didn't want to hurt animals, and they were like you, you know, wherever you were, everyone was the same. And now it seems to get a bit more confusing because people say I'm vegan and I'm like, okay, so what exactly does that mean to you? Because for some that means they don't consume oil, they just primarily eat a raw diet and there's lots and lots of different things. There's even a term called vegan. Have you heard of that lately? It's said vegans, but they eat eggs, not vegan, mate. So, um, you know, and there's other things like people care about feminism and environmental stuff as well, but might not necessarily be vegan. 
So today I want to talk about some of the core ethics involved with veganism and past just the dietary and food aspects. Because most of the top internet searches online focus on these things. So they focus on health and they focus on diet. And the mainstream media in particular focus on these things. So health, diet and weight loss. And so today I'm going to mention a few words that maybe you haven't heard before and I hope you can learn something new today. I'm going to mention some words like ethics, intersectionality, oppression, privilege, compassion and effective communication. So if you haven't, uh, if you don't know what these words are, hopefully you'll get to learn them at the end. So in the past 20 years, there's quite a shift of um, the word vegan. And um, 20 years ago, we really didn't have many vegan options. So it was very exciting when you went to a health food store and you got a dark chocolate bar. That was about the most excitement you got as a vegan 20 years ago. Now you can see there's so many things. Some of my friends have just had donuts and ice cream and there's a, a jackfruit pulled pork burrito I'm having after my talk. And so for 20 years ago, you had to literally give up food. So um, it was that sort of scarcity mentality. And I must say, I'm still struggling with that scarcity mentality a bit when I go out to eat and I'm like, oh, I have to have that cake because I might not have it again. Just because, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't have the vegan cake and you had to make sure you had that those um, um, really yummy things before. And now they're everywhere. So I can't be using that excuse as much anymore. There's so many products, businesses, shops and restaurants. It's so easy to go vegan and it's so easy to stay vegan. It's still going, we're working, everything is fine. Um, and um, in the past four to five years, I've noticed the term vegan is getting used a lot more. Okay, where I need to go. Um, so, I'm going to Bear with us today, everyone. Enjoy the rain. We're all in it together. Um, so the past four to five years, the term vegan's been used more. And um, like I said before, it's mostly on eating or not eating certain foods. So it focuses on weight loss and control. And also, it focuses on things like allergens, so dairy-free, egg-free, wheat-free, things like that. And um, and um, I think that's, and I know a lot of people have problems when they go to eat somewhere, and they'll go, oh, have you got something vegan? And people go, oh yeah, we've got gluten-free stuff. I'm like, that's not vegan, mate. You know, so you need to be, we need to really make a difference between these um, sort of health issues and these allergens issues that a veganism seems to be getting wrapped up in and there's a lot of food terms being used like high carb low fat raw even paleo vegan so these food related aspects are just one part of the being vegan and I personally think that when we're talking about food or diet you should be using the term plant-based instead and I fully, fully um, am aware that words and meanings change over time and, you know, we should all embrace that. Um, but I find it really hard sometimes that I have more in common with someone who's a meat eater and is um, involved in social justice issues than I do with someone who's a vegan who just wants to lose weight. So in case you're not aware, a vegan is someone who does not consume the following things. They don't consume any animal flesh. And this includes sea creatures, fish, still an animal. This includes animal secretions like dairy. This includes animal products like eggs. This includes animal byproducts like gelatine. And remember, veganism is not just a diet. And 
And the word vegan was coined in 1944 by Donald Watson of the Vegan Society in UK. Did everyone know that? Yeah, a few people. Good. Gold star. And um, here's the little definition that he came up with. Veganism is a way of living that seeks to exclude, as far as possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, and any other purpose. Notice there's a couple more things than just food. So... Um, here's, a here's some other things that don't relate to diet and food. Vegans choose not to wear animals for clothing, for example, wool, silk and leather. They choose not to um, use animal products for cosm cosmetics or household goods. And this can include things like lanolin and beeswax and stuff like that, which seems to be in a lot of things. Vegans um, would not support animals, animal testing or even buy the products if they've been tested on animals. And they would not support animals being used for entertainment. And this can be for zoos, circuses, aquariums and rode rodeos. Or rode rodeos. So veganism is a set of ethical guidelines and a commitment to these ethical guidelines. So it's my way of leading by example to promote peace, love and compassion to the world. And there's many, many reasons to go vegan and there's many reasons to stay vegan. And these include animal rights and ethics, they include health, fitness, diet, environment and land use and rights, human and labour rights, feminism and social justice issues. Now there's been a lot of studies that um, show why people stay vegan. So here's just some ideas of why people stay vegan. So there's a reason why people become vegan, but we want people to stay vegan, that's very important. So animal welfare is the most effective way to get people to eat less meat. Whether or not that's important to you or the most important thing, that's the most important thing for other people. And health reasons are second best. And I'd really like for you to have a look at some books that I love. Nick Cooney has written some great books, How to Be Great at Doing Good, his most recent one, Veganomics and Change of Heart. And um, there's also a group called Humane Leagues Lab that do a lot of research and um, on these sort of things. So have a look at that website. You can join the mailing list and check out his books. That rain is setting in, is it not? Okay, so I really want people to be open to learning about new reasons why vegan. So you've got your main sort of idea, but I really want you to focus on learning about new things. Because the more reasons you have to be vegan, the more I hope that you'll stick with being vegan. Okay, so veganism to me, it encompasses everything I believe in. So consciousness raising, non-oppression, non-objectification and anti-consumerism. And so I went vegan primarily for animal rights reasons. And um, I've also been involved in feminist and environmentalist movements. Um, but now I'm interested in all social justice issues and how these all relate or intersect with each other. And I enjoy talking about this. So, who knows what intersectionality means? A few people? Mm -hmm. Gold star. You're winning with the gold stars. I think you're only on one camp. <laughs> um, so, intersectionality just means linking to all justice movements, social justice movements. So it's linking all of these things together. And it's working together to make changes. We can really learn from other people all the time. And some examples that intersectionality addresses, they include racism, sexism, speciesism, homophobia, ableism, classism, and ageism. If you don't know what any of those words mean, please have a look online or come up and have a chat to me afterwards.
So veganism is a really great way of putting compassion into action and living in line with your beliefs. It's a great way to lead by example and show others how you want our world to be. One of the best ways to show people how to, how to make changes is lead by example. Who loves puffins? Me? Oh my, what a cute photo. Um, so veganism to me is just one step. So it's amazing. Like if you're vegan, that's great. That's so important. That's so great. But please remember it's just one step. And we can always learn more. So vegans do not partake in the use, abuse or exploitation of any non-human animals for any reason. And I think more focus needs to be on things beyond what we do or what we don't eat. And there's so many great um, vegan or animal rights groups that do a lot of really great work. I don't 100% um, agree with any group 100% of the time, but so many people create great information that you can share and really do some great work that you can share. And um, yeah, please use the content. And this can include undercover investigations, fact sheets, recipes, interviews, articles, and even rescue stories. Rescue stories are a really great way to show people how that being vegan can really help animals. And have a look around today, especially um, at the Sea Shepherd stuff and some other groups, and find out how you can get involved. And I really want everyone just to focus on how you could do a bit better. So do your own research, think about these things that I've said today. And um, I want you to think about how we can learn more and do better and become better examples of compassion in action. So I'm just going to focus on a few different aspects of um, veganism, what we've spoken about. I'm going to raise some questions I'd like you to think about. So first we're going to talk about health. Now the vegan diet can be healthy. 20 years ago, definitely healthy. Nowadays, with all the options we have, not so healthy. So it can be healthy, and in particular, if you focus on the basic four vegan staples, which are fruit and veggies, whole grains, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, and pulses. Now, there's a lot of not so healthy vegan food that exists. And there's a lot of restrictive and controlling diets that exist, especially a young, among young girls. And these are coming under the guise of healthy eating. There's so many vegan diets that get promoted online. And just, I've just listed a few here, like high carb, low fat, oil free, gluten free, paleo, sugar free, low carb, raw, fat vegan, which means you eat honey, the whole food, low fat raw, the 80-10-10, raw till four, can't keep up with them most of the time, there's always something new. So in regards to health, I've got a few questions I want to ask you. So with a lot of the not so healthy stuff and the restrictive eating that's happening, should veganism still be promoted as a healthy diet? One question. Another question is, should veganism be promoted as a cure-all? And what can, we, um, what can we do to encourage others to be flexible and open to all types of healthful vegan eating and vegan food? What can we do to encourage long-term commitment to the vegan lifestyle? And how can we show that the different types of vegan diets exist? And there's, I'm very impressed with everyone sitting here, but look, if you need to get under the um, shelter, you can. You won't get a gold star, but you can do it. Um, and so there's in, some environmental impacts of a non-vegan diet, so animal products. They're really inefficient as a food source because we're feeding, say, a protein source to animals and then we're eating the animals when we could be just eating that protein source, say, soy. It's a massive scale, this industry. There's tens of billions of animals killed every single year. 
land clearing and degradation is another thing. Greenhouse gases, which include carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide. And these emissions range from 20 to 50 percent. And some, and most people say um, that these are underreported for a lot of different reasons. And Paul Marnie writes some really good stuff in regards to um, environmental impacts of the diet, so I suggest you check out his stuff. And obviously, if you're eating a vegan diet, you are not contributing to any of those things. So, here's some environmental questions I'd like you to think about or ask yourselves. Where does your food come from? As I said before, as a vegan, you're not um, contributing to the contributing to those things I just mentioned but what about the growing processes they okay, might not work the production and the packaging might have to hang out with you on the rain again um, so what are the growing producing and packaging processes that happen with your food how far have your favorite packaged vegan foods traveled like food miles um, what about food scarcity and food security? And do you support in-season, locally grown, organic and non-GMO foods? Now people, humans are animals too. We seem to forget this, especially online. Everyone's so mean online. Why is everyone mean? Don't understand it. Um, one thing I want to talk about is that unskilled and undocumented workers, they work in abattoirs in really horrific conditions with really low pay. Now, I don't know one person that goes, hey, I'm going to be an abattoir worker when I grow up. There's a reason why some people do these jobs. And we have to be really, you know, respectful sometimes of the position some people are in. And obviously, vegans are not supporting these sort of jobs. But here's some questions I want to ask you about people. Think about your vegan clothing, your vegan shoes and your favourite brands. What are the ethics and the conditions involved in the manufacturing processes? Have you thought about that? Do you know how your favourite products are produced? And do the people who make these items get a fair wage with what they do? Have you thought about feminism or human rights or reproductive rights? Um, feminists, in case you're not aware, are against the objectification and commodification of their bodies and they're against their bodies being seen as a product. So, a question for you today is, um, do you think defending one type of female body while using and abusing another is okay? And do you think different types of bodies and different types of people should be used to promote veganism? Because at the moment, it's a lot of white, a lot of white around. And domestic violence is a massive issue. I'm sure we all know that, especially here in Australia. And harming of non-human animals when younger. This is seen as something that can lead to the harming of people if this is left unchecked. So a question in regards to violence is should we dismiss certain types of behaviour just because of someone's age, because of their sex, because of their position in society or their class? And most of us have privileges that we never really understand, we can't comprehend and um, we really don't appreciate them until they're taken away from us. And it's important to be mindful of others with this. It's important to exercise compassion. And it's really, really easy to be judgmental. Everyone can be judgmental. Everyone can say that they're doing better than everyone else. But it's really important that we don't act that way. And yeah, we think we have all the answers. We think we know how everything should be done, but we don't. Here's my privilege quote. See, it's in bold. This is important. So we all have choices but some people have much better choices than other people do. So here's some things I want you to keep in mind in regards to privilege. Some people can't choose not to eat particular foods. Some people can't afford to buy new vegan clothes or vegan shoes. 
Some people can't access transportation to vegan restaurants. Some people can't afford to attend paid vegan events. Some people aren't mentally or physically able to attend, say, protests or demos. Some people don't feel comfortable amongst the other sex. Some people don't feel as they belong because there's a lot of people that look different to them or in the vegan movement, there's no one that really looks like them or that they can relate to. And some people don't feel their opinion is valid enough to share it. trying to sort the water thing out I'll just keep dripping um, so I just want you to always be learning everyone it's really important and um, like I said our way is not the only way and we need to learn from other movements and an example of a great movement that does great things is the LGBTQI community and um, the reason that I like to give this example is because there's a lot of people who support and are allies of this movement whether or not they're gay lesbian etc so I think that vegans, we can learn from this. How do we get other people involved with veganism who might not necessarily be vegan? And how can we participate in other social justice movements and support their causes? How can we encourage others to support our movement, whether or not they're vegan? And how can we promote vegan in the most inclusive way? So we need to be planting seeds, that's really important. And at best, you know, vegans are one to two percent of the population, and that figure hasn't really changed in 20 years. We need to find out other people's passions and their motivations. Just because something's important to me doesn't mean it's important to someone else. And see how you can plant the seeds of change. And some ideas I'll give you, if someone, say, um, interested in gardening, you could tell them about veganic gardening. If they're interested in fitness, you can talk about Billy Simmons. He's a great athlete. The lovely Chrissy Cavallo is over there. Give us a wave, Chrissy. She'll be speaking at 2.30, so she's another great example to tell your fitness friends. And obviously, my vegan athletes book. And if people really love their animals or their um, companion animals in particular, something you could say is like pigs are just as loyal as dogs and um, they're more intelligent than dogs or for people that care about their environment you know you don't have to change your light bulbs you don't have to get a hybrid car just change what you're eating on your plate each meal and there's some really cool um, websites that I like the Food Empowerment Project, one of my favourite groups actually, so foodispower.org, I suggest you check out. Sister Vegan Project, I also um, encourage you to check out. And Vegan Feminist Network as well. So, vegans don't only care about animals, so let's start acting like it, and especially online. We need to learn more about each other and the world around us, and all systems of oppression need to be changed. And I know, I know, it's overwhelming, so much to do, so many things to think about, got to lead a life as well, but... Um, there's only 24 hours in a day, so you just need to do the things that you can do and try not to worry about the things you can't. And I suggest, you know, start with the things that resonate with you the most. And um, what are you most passionate about? What are you best at communicating? This is where you should start. And always aim to do more. And there's a great phrase that I like, and it's focus on more good and less harm. So if you use that as your mantra, that's a good start. So online, we need to be nice, we need to be kind to each other. And just because you can't see someone doesn't mean they're not a person that has feelings. And you can still disagree with someone. We don't need to be using negative words, we don't need to be calling people names, we don't need to be being, being racist to people and being judgmental. And wrongly or rightly, you know, you may be the only vegan that people come into contact with. 
and I've met so many people who are now vegan who've said to me, I would have gone vegan years ago, but this guy that I started talking to, he was a vegan, he was rah, 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 rah. And you know, there's a lot of people who are negative and quite judgmental in the movement, and you don't want to be like that. What you do and how you do it reflects the whole movement, so we nearly, really need to act like it. Here's my top 10 tips on um, online etiquette, and you can't read it, so just pretend you can. It's a nice, pr nice pretty picture, my handwriting. The top tip is act, don't react. So please keep that in mind. And here's a few things I really want you to think about and be mindful of when you're interacting with other people and online. What language do you use when you're promoting veganism? Is it positive or negative? Is it encouraging or discouraging? Is it empathetic or judgmental? Are you preaching or are you teaching? And do you use racist language when you're communicating with people online? And um, this includes like when you're talking about other countries and their cultures. Some examples would be like Japan and dolphin, dolphins and whaling, China and dog meat, Middle East with live export. You have to be really, really aware of what you're saying. Do you use trigger words that might really upset someone? So some examples of that would be slave, rape, concentration camp. They're all like trigger words that could really hurt someone. And do you tell terminally ill or um, disabled people that you can cure them with a vegan diet? I've seen all of these things online, by the way. And some advice would be do your own research, investigate and read more, focus on finding out what connects us to each other, and let's not disagree with all those little things that we disagree on. Let's focus on the big, the big picture. And for 20 years being vegan, my best advice I can give you is to lead by example and be consistent. That's it, simple. Lead by example, be consistent. And be the best version of yourself. And everything starts with small steps, you know? Every, every good idea can come. It might, you know, you might plant seeds one day, it might not happen for a few years, it might happen overnight, but they still get to the same destination. And I believe that once someone learns something, they can't unlearn it. And they might, you know, put it to the side for a while, they might ignore it for a while, but it's still there. And what works for you might not work for others. And we're all made up as, of the same things, but we're really all not the same. So, here's a few other things. We need to be focusing on encouragement instead of judgment. We need to focus on education and planting seeds instead of preaching to people and trying to convert people. We need to always remember kindness and we need to always remember compassion. And be the best vegan you can be and I want you to all start from now, please. <laughs> So, um, here's some ways you can connect with me online. My vivalavegan.net website, and I'm across all social media channels, and my leishontel.com website, and across all social media channels with that. So, how are we going for time? Still, I've got a bit of time for questions if anyone has any questions. So, I hope you've learned something today, and if you have learned something new, I really encourage you to share that knowledge with someone else because we need people to be learning more things all the time. Does anyone have any questions? Gee, everyone's very shy now. Maybe the rain took it all away. All those great questions. I was very excited about the questions I was going to have. But anyway, pardon? Maybe everyone's already vegan. That's great. <laughs> but I hope you can think about all those other things that I mentioned today as well. So I just want to take the time to thank everyone involved with Sea Shepherd today. Um, please, um, you know, support them in any way you can, mon monetarily or volunteering your time and energies. And also all the other stores that we've got here, all the great volunteers for helping today, especially in this rain. Thank you very much. And I'll speak to you later.